you see here walnut trees. Um, I was building a house two years ago and I have two boys, uh, twins. They're nine years old and uh, when, uh, uh, when you make your garden, of course you ask your kids what, what, what they want to have in. And uh, we have to plant trees because, because this is what you do when you build a house. And my kids said, uh, Dad, we want to have a walnut tree because we don't like walnuts. And I said, yeah, are you really sure? Because uh, everybody who's in gardening knows that a walnut tree is not so easy. It has to be in the right position, it should be not too cold. And also what you have to understand, it takes 12 years until you can do the first harvesting. And my kids uh, have the same problem like me, they're not patient. And uh, therefore I said, are you really sure that you are now nine, you want to wait 12 years until you have the first harvesting? And they said, yes. And when we speak about uh, startups and, and, and new technologies, this is what we have to learn. We have to wait. Huh? Sometimes more than our politicians or than yourself. Success takes time. And success has also more than one father, than more than one mother. But let's start with what we speak when you hear space downstream and when a person from the European Space Agency comes up. And, and a little bit to my person, I'm an industrial engineer, I've worked for Apple, I had my own startup company and worked then with astronauts, so um, I'm the alien in ESA still, and uh, I'm the head of the recycling office, because I take technology which we develop and bring it somewhere else. But when we speak about space, of course, you think about looking down, you think about astronauts. This is why I joined ESA, because astronaut, that's pretty cool. So after Apple, I said astronauts at least is the similar level. Yeah, it's maybe not as crazy as Steve, but different. So this is the fuel you have on the ISS. The International Space Station uh, is not far away, it's just 400 kilometers up uh, in the sky, uh, rotating with 28,000 kilometers per hour across Earth. They don't have a miles or more account because otherwise they would uh, scrape the limit. And when you speak about space, and Elon Musk, we heard that, we also speak about technologies like this. Rick is doing that from deep space industry, mining, yeah, what, what we do with mining. We have uh, 13,000, uh, 13 and a half thousand objects, near Earth objects, and they think about mining. And we say that's far away, but the Luxembourg government has put in money into that, substantial money. Yeah? Why they have done it? Because they have learned out of the steel crisis in the 80s that investing into a satellite company called SL Astra is a clever thing to do. So they going a little bit further because we are a small country, we have to be a little bit further. Last year, President Obama was signing a space agreement, uh, and the last pages, you see it. America guarantees everybody who can prove, which is when you move an asteroid, and moving an asteroid is super easy. You smash a satellite into the asteroid. You set it. Super easy. Technology assistant in years. If you can prove that you have moved that asteroid, this is your claim. In principle, they give a shit on the other legislation they have signed before. Uh, uh, no comment on this, I'm a governmental person, but theoretically this is where they want to invest. And we have companies already thinking about how to hedge this investment. Because if I invest now, maybe in 20, 30 years you get the profit. There's an English saying, when my ship returns, that was the same, they sent ships to the West Indies, to America, and from the 10 ships, maybe only three, were coming back. It was a similar time frame of the people uh, 300 years ago. So this is a long-term investment. Clever stuff, they're looking into technology. And space, this is what space is today. You know, S. Illustra has 1,600 people, uh, makes 1.8 billion revenue, it's not big, but it's the biggest satellite operation company. 45 satellite covering 99% of Europe. This is standard. What is also standard when we speak about downstream, these numbers are OCD numbers from 2014, of course, ex-Apple person. They made more money already, it's 200 billion over there, it's an Im uh, amazing amount. And then we go down, Amazon, the, okay, 2014 numbers are bad, but now they do better. But when we compare and looking what the space industry is, this is where the market is. Satellite service, altogether it's even bigger. And 2016 numbers would be also higher. The problem might be that we in Europe, we're discussing this part, the launches. It's great to have hardware, we have to have access to space, but we have to look to the top. This is where the cake is, what we want to get, and not the bottom. And by the way, I have good news, if you need a satellite, go to the web, the CubeSub shop, it's one of our startup companies, we have support and you buy it online. So everybody who is in CubeSats, trust me, 
We have a saying in the mountains, don't buy a, a cow when you need a glass of milk. And trust me, our engineers in Estec will build a cow, artificial cow, of course, and after two years, two million. No, when you make a cube set, you buy the spare parts, you do the assembly. And the system integration will be you know how. So everybody in CubeSat looking to the components and looking to the system integration. I give you some examples of the startups we support at the moment. And uh, this is one of my favorites. Yeah? Uh, if you have problem in, in, in traffic, yeah? uh, maybe something also in Athens. This is not so far away. The prototype is at the moment they're printing that. In, in, in near Oberpfaffenhofen, they have a factory and there are six uh, plotters and they print at them on this. Next year, they go for the qualification with the air control. And this is why we need Galileo. It's the flight control. It's, it's going to the fourth dimension. And this is also what I ask also the audience, which navigation signal you would trust your life on? If it's autonomous driving or flight? The Russians, the Americans, the Chinese, or the better the Europeans. Or otherwise, which signal would be manipulated for the purpose of the country? Yeah? The Russians, the Chinese, the Americans, the Europeans. Even with the European want to manipulate the signal, the crisis would be over until they manipulate the signal. <laughs> we are the only trusted signal in the world. Another company we supported, this is uh, Scott Larson. Uh, he was winning the Copernicus Masters 2011, 2013. They went IPO in Canada. They mounted a pretty cool camera on the outside of the International Space Station and, and taking pictures. 2014, uh, they bought Demos Images for 72 million. And uh, now he is not retired, but he sold his share. He's creating the next company. This is what we need. And he's Canadian, he's not American. And he wants to work with Europe. And these are the entrepreneurs we need. On the other side, what my office also is doing is the classical technology transfer. So when you have made as a startup uh, enough money and have your first Porsche or Ferrari, you can click the button ceramic brake, which is pretty cool because it's lighter. It lasts uh, 30,000 kilometers, 60% 60 lighter, better. And this is what we learn in the recycling office coming out of Hermes. That was a glider uh, similar like a space shuttle. ASA was developed. And as a technology transfer engineer, I like missions which do not fly because then the engineers are forced to do something with the technology. This was the example there. And what we also learned, that there is no crazy transfer. One of uh, the most interesting customers we have is the Vatican Library. And they're using a data format which we have developed jointly with NASA. It's called Flexible Image Data Format. So all the astronomical data of our stars are collected. Uh, so and you need the stars to navigate uh, when you have satellites. And then we went down there and asked this Monsignore and said, why you don't take PDF from Adobe? It's a pretty good format, you know. We also use it for documentation. And then he said, Mr. Salsky, who can guarantee that Adobe in 50 to 100 years still exists? We know that Vatican have a different time horizon. <laughs> <laughs> the lessons learned is we have to learn what the customer wants, not what we want. And trust me, this is needed in an agency also like ESA. Another company, not even two years old, uh, they're looking to construction sites. And this when we speak about downstream, these are killer applications. They look in construction sites when you sell carpet, furniture, electricity, heating. And you have to sell out your sales force and see how, how far is the construction site in terms of maturity. Is it already time to sell or it's uh, the base construction, what's going on? And we say you can get a little bit of information out of the web, but if you combine it with radar data, Every one centimeter difference you, will, you can sketch. So this company has nearly 20 people, has a $50 million evaluation, has already three investors, and is not older than two years. These are the applications when you combine the space segment with a little bit of logic with other things. And we help them now to go international. Or my British colleagues, uh, the British startup, who had the X-ray the last five years, by the way, come on, yes, 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 we're all ill. Oh, don't go to the dentist I have because then you get radiated too much. Here's the old equipment. <laughs> you using a technology which is 120 years old, vacuum tubes. Tell me where you still use vacuum tubes in x-rays. And these gentlemen want to kill it. So they really want to piss off Siemens, GE, because they made it digital. The sensors are coming from space, the software comes from space, and the system integration comes from space. 
We have received already several million investment, but the fight will be find the right partner really to beat Siemens. Because you make the X-ray device 20 kilograms light. That means you bring it there where the patient is. In the aging's homes, you have it in the ambulance, you can bring it in. So now the patient goes to the X-ray and this is what they want to change. And trust me, big industry hates that. And this is the reason why they need our support. All right, what we do now, I have to shock you a little bit, some diagrams, at least I have to prove them that I'm an engineer. So this is what we do in principle. We, we do the IP of the patents of ESA, where we help startup companies. We have a network of brokers, which goes to industry, especially SMEs. And as a what are you working? Thank you very much. And now we, we, we sell it or transfer it to non-space industry, like the Karami breaks. There could be software, there could be know-how, there could be uh, a material, does not matter. We invest heavily in idea competitions. Yeah? Act in Space was also here, we, we joined that. Navigation Master, Copernicus Master, App Camps, Hackathons, because this is where we get the ideas. And why we need these ideas? Because we want to bring them by our partners in acceleration, but into the incubation, creating startup companies. We need more startup companies. And then, of course, we do that, and uh, I'll show a map in a sec with the European Venture Capital Association. We had ESA Investment Forum, Space Investment Forums 2006. We stopped it because the market has taken over. We were even a, a, a limited partner of a venture capital fund, the first venture capital fund investing in space. Has failed because one of the investors was not putting the money in fully, but still we invested uh, about 25 million. Here I get the criticization, it's, oh, it has failed. Uh, in March, I was meeting Steve Jobertson, he's the boss of or one of the partners of DFJ. This is the guy who gives the money to Elon Musk. He said, that's pretty cool. I said, but it failed. I said, so what? You were the first, you paved the way, great. This we also have to learn. We have to start. And if you do things, you make mistakes and you do failure. The easiest is to do nothing because then you're safe, but that's bad. And what we built the last 10 years is really an equal environment for entrepreneurship in space. Starting from the network, which we have the TT offices, Max Planck, Fraunhofer, Weizmann, uh, twice a, uh, uh, once a year I meet the colleagues from NASA TT office, JAXA, DLR, uh, uh, Roscosmos. We speak with uh, the incubation center, there's this EBN where I'm sitting on the board, and, and, and so on. So it's really the ecosystem which is unique. America do not have that yet. Yeah? They want to build it up and they're doing it pretty good. That's the map of our partners where we are. 60 incubation center and we support this year 130 new startups. Next year should be 20 incubation centers in 35 locations and I hope we have one in Greece because there is the biggest missing. We want to really support startups here. And I think you have a great market, uh, great people, great engineers, great environment and I think you need only, in, in, in Switzerland you would say you need a schnapps more to make it run. And I think this is what we have to work on. And these are all national excellence. We do it <coughs> for CNES and uh, Aerospace Valley in France. We do it for Barcelona Activa in Spain. We work for DLR in Germany. We hooking on on national excellence and bring the international flavor. And um, on the other thing is that we have requests from outside Argentina, Brazil, Singapore, Saudi Arabia. So this is a hot subject. Idea competition, I told you, navigation and so on. But more interesting, it's not only downstream when we speak about apps. We create infrastructure. Our companies, when we see here, this is the uh, kind of wind tunnel, or not kind of, it's a wind tunnel, one of our startup companies. It's not even two years, and they bought a wind tunnel. This is a, a real light. This is one of the two technology Google looks in for the com laser communication. It's one of our startups. It's also hardware, which brings productivity and production back in the regions, which is production back in the regions, which is our, and I'll give you some examples, which, we, which is already old, because it's uh, three weeks old. Six companies, co-funded them with 300,000, it should be not 23 million, multiplier they made is already 30 million, and these are the numbers normally what startups can do if you are the honest partner. Anyhow. I run a little bit quicker because we speak about uh, the next 15 minutes about what are the chances. Ah oh yeah, by the way, I told you about the tree, you remember, 12 years. This incubation center is 12 years old. Uh, they started before us. There's one number which I do not like. Is this one. The survival rate. I think it's too high. We have to take more risks. 
If we lower this, the survival rate, to 60, it will be different number here. And this is what we have to learn. Okay. In life, you or in, during work, there are always moments where you get this kind of strike. And I had that uh, four years ago. I was preparing my home office, putting the things together, and um, one of my kids, uh, Lucas, was coming down, and, and, and that was on, on, on my desk then. And they have all Apple gadgets, you know? If you shake that with Steve, you can't work on Windows, you have Apple gadgets. And, um, my, my, and this is a true story. My, my young son said that, Dad, what is that? And, uh, and I said, it's a telephone. You know what the answer was? Where's the display? <laughs> true story. And I said, you don't need the display. You take a finger, you wheel, you turn it. I said, why? <laughs> he went up, totally bored. Yeah? <coughs> and it took me 10 minutes until I realized, damn, I'm living in the past. He lives in the present. As long as there are people in the audience that love, it's good because then you also live in the past and then I'm alone. Yeah? But when I give you three areas which I think for the younger generation is really the big business. This is the oldest map which exists. 2,600 year old from Babylon, in Mergamundi. In the middle you see Babylon and the river of Euphrat. And there's one star going to the north where the people see nothing, the, the land of the dark, so that was Europe that time. So, and the, car, the map has not really changed the last 2,600 years. Still dimensional, it's still flat. Okay, besides uh, that uh, uh, we were grown up with folk maps, you know, maps when you extracted them, you never get them back again, and you had to buy a new one, or our generation younger, they get never lost, besides their iPhone runs out of battery. Then you're in the ship. So, but it's not true. Because when you see a satellite image, a satellite image has up to 350 layers. So, 350 layers of data. In Europe, statistic data is already collected 100 by 100 as a raster. Statistic data. Okay, we need another 50 layers. Seismic data, and so on and so on. There are already areas where you can say what is the poorness level based on the light. So what you get is a layer, as a matrix, and then you go wind speed and so on, and then we go to the past, because we have data from the past. So when you go swimming, it's easy to tell you what is the water quality, what is the water visibility, what is the uh, water temperature, what was the temperature, what was the wind speed, which sun cream you have to take on the UEV level, and I can even tell you if the grass on which you sit needs more fertilizer. So the future map is not two-dimensional. The future map is like a lasagna. Yeah? Depending where you drill, is a different taste. And this is really super attractive because this is big data. There is a nice project, you Google it, it's the open data policy of the city of New York. There are 1,600 data sets there. And there you can go back for the past. And there you see areas, uh, vegetation, uh, you see the, the, the normal maps. You can go into the history, 9-11. Uh, and you see also what is the square meter price or is the aging population in the country. 70% of the data are geolocated. 100% of our space data are geolocated. And trust me, this is the big business of the future and people are investing. And this is uh, where we see digital globe. Normally you had 40 centimeters of resolution. Uh, uh, and now the government of US were a little bit more tolerant. Now it goes down to 25 centimeters, okay, after half a year. But still, this is a sharp picture, and this you do from space. And all these companies, like Planet Labs, uh, and, and name them all, they're looking for Earth observation data. It's great, but you still have to put something into it. This is the reason why uh, Google is investing heavily in this area. Yeah, they invested the last 10 years, 26 billion in this area. They bought uh, uh, ways for 1.1 and so on because it's about the maps. Uh, I don't know who uh, realized that last year the German car manufacturer bought the um, uh, here platform, which is the old Navtech maps, for 2.8 billion. When you have a new BMW, new Mercedes, or Volkswagen German car, they you transmit data and it's not you your data. It's owned by the car manufacturer. They know within 10 minutes if there's a new roundabout. Trust me, Google cannot send so many cars out as the German companies are producing. And the car is the sensor. Might be scary. On the other side, it's super interesting. And the, and the future will be rather, and this is also what ASA has to learn. We do projects 
ESA was one customer for one project, 1.5 million. One to one we do. We have to go away and do, have to do end to end projects. This is the reason why we work with SAP, putting all the Sentinel data in there and working on the cloud platform. And making logic, you have to program a logic, putting a small amount to it, make micro payments, make APIs out of it, and sell it. And the logic of the UV level is one logic, and it can be sold millions of times. But the combination with big data, with the crowd, uh, and, and the cloud, and micro payments, this is really the key. Facebook is Mickey Mouse against this. This is a data set which is huge, and there will be I spoke with the CEO of Allianz. He no, has no fear about Münchner Rick. They have fear what Google is doing because they know what's going on in that market. Okay, this I would invest if I uh, would have time. Okay, then you said robotics. Yeah, this is when we speak about robotics, fear, and, and I think your robotic was different. We also have companies in that area. I think it's super interesting, and I would call robotics and uh, artificial intelligence in one go. This is what we what we do. Uh, it's like uh, e-bikes. I'm coming from a spa and it's amazing how old people are mobilized by e-bikes. Okay, they're much too quick, but you put the entire generation back into active mode. And robotics will, will do the same, after in rehabilitation, after accidents, and so on. And also, when we speak about exploration, uh, this we have a haptic labs uh, uh, in, in ESA. You put the arm into an exoskelet, you get uh, uh, 3D glasses, you see something, you touch something, you feel something, but it's 300 kilometers away. Forced feedback, augmented reality. When we want to go subsea, when we go onto Mars, this is the technology. And of course, wearable technology, these are artificial muscles. Uh, this is pretty cool for rehabilitation. And this is also what we will need uh, when we um, uh, go for long term missions. And when we speak about the subject about autonomous driving, we navigate since the last two, 20 years, pretty good. We're becoming now with deep learning, much better, you know, the kind of theory which know what signs and so on. But there's still more to go. And there we are back when we speak autonomous driving, which signal will you trust? And the next thing is, this was on a safari trip. Uh, my wife was not happy because uh, the car was breaking down and we had no signal. There are so many places, you only have to cross uh, Austria to Germany and you have for five minutes no telephone signal. Autonomous driving will not work without the space component. Because you need a navigation signal you can trust, you need telecommunication worldwide, and trust me, 4G, 5G is great, but you need a backup. You don't want to drive for five minutes without your backup. And the intelligence, yeah, like this will take a long time. The computer power will be in the data centers, not in the car. So this picture will maybe take a little bit longer. So normally people expect that artificial intelligence really in the level that it works, that they can do normal function what a normal human being can do and not in a specialized area, 2050, 2060. And still it will be in the data center and not in the car. Therefore the telecommunication aspect you need and also the earth observation later for security. I'm nearly done. So where are our new ideas coming from? Yeah. And uh, Peter Drucker said very nicely, culture, it's strategy for breakfast. And this is true. And this is also our organization. I make it even more uh, harder. This is an experiment you hopefully not do because it's a very nasty experiment. You put a bee in a glass and you hold the bottom of the glass to the sun. You know what happened? The bee will die. Because the bee has only one plan. Escape in the direction of the sun. So this is also what we have to learn. We have to think about the plan B, B and C. And this has to do with our education system. Therefore, it's so good to be here. I'm an industrial engineer, and this I learned how to construct. Yeah. We, think t we teach still our kids a technology and a way of thinking for an industry of the last century. Two-dimensional, and then we bring it three-dimensional. This time is over. One of my favorite prizes of the active space was uh, a pen, which was the magnetic field of the Earth detection, and you move and you design 3D right away. Wow! This is, we think in 3D, we see in 3D, we hear in 3D, but we design 2D. Sorry, there's something wrong. It's a handicap. And this is the, when we speak about, are our engineers the right one? 
And maybe you do not know uh, this example. That Facet was uh, in the 60s a pretty cool uh, company. Who remember uh, these, these, uh, these, these calculators? Yeah? A Swedish company. Excellent. They made millions. They were world mark leading. And then there was a company from Japan, Casio, coming up with digital calculators. And the, the, the bad part is that the engineers of Facet used these calculators. They had it in their hand and look to their calculation machine if the, if the result is correct. So they had the future in their hand, but they were too stupid and too blind to see it. This is the difference between, or the balance between exploration and exploitation of things. So our engineers in Kodak, and there are so many examples. Speaking about the space industry, the space industry is like the Adams family. They're pretty cool, they had a lot of tricks, but for the outside, I'm sorry, we are freaks. And this is what we have to overcome. I don't want to be the Adams family. I want to be the nice neighbor because I want to do business with everybody. And when we're looking to evolution, and this is where we discussed before, evolution is not brutal, evolution cleans up. And there are only two passes. Either you die out or evolution. Nothing in between. But sometimes we put money into the middle thing which is not incubation, it's called intubation. You know intubation, when patient goes to the emergency room and it's a very critical condition, and you put uh, tubers into and pump air into the maybe lively body. The good thing is when something dies out, it makes room, and nature is very creative to fill this room right away. So to die sometimes in a company or in innovation, it's good because it filled up immediately. And this is what our startups is doing. This is the reason why it's so important to invest in startups. And we have to kill the zombie companies. The zombie companies, American phrase, means you are a company normally with five, six people. Your runway is the next R&D project. Yeah? And trust me, my feeling is, as I said, I worked maybe too long for American corporation, it's much easier to get an R&D contract than bringing a product on the market. And these companies we have to kill. Because this money is better invested in new products, in innovation, and in cool companies. The other point, these are five people of 100 million people under 30 without a job worldwide. And this we have seen uh, in, in Portugal, Spain, uh, maybe applicable also to Greece. The risk to get a stagiarship was unpaid. The risk to get no job or the risk to create a startup company is the same risk. That was maybe 20 years ago different. And trust me, in Italy it's the same. Yeah, because you were getting a job and so everything was secure. And this has changed. So this, I say, is also the crisis is also a chance to put and invest into entrepreneurship. Because after every crisis, this is the reason why the German industry is so strong. Because after the war, all the patents were, were gone. So they have to invest. Every crisis is good when we use the right momentum and put it into entrepreneurship and empower the people. And this is my other son. Uh, he's five years old at that time. It was the first day where we got the, the red slopes. You know, we're skiing, uh, family. And you see, he's still smiling. You know? He was falling five times down and stand up, and fall down and stand up. He's still smiling. So what we need of a kind of entrepreneurs are people which uh, have no fear and little respect. And when you see that, this is what entrepreneurs are. They're still fighting, saying, I don't give up, I continue, I'm right. Don't listen to people which say differently. And if we do that, maybe it comes like at a half billion years ago when uh, nature, it called the Cambrian explosion, when nature was bringing up a variety of new species. I believe that we have a kind of criminal explosion of startups. And this is, I think, what we do. And this is what we have to learn in Europe. Our learning, oh no, our growing curse is the, the low one, you. First revenue and then growth. In America is different, first growth and then revenue. I think with the collaborative mode, with the pigs and in Europe, we have something in between. Where we send companies and making business to each other and if they don't want to go to Asia, I find a partner, SME, which is like my cousin. He gets my product, we make a joint venture and he sells it there and vice versa, because we do not want to move companies and people like the US. This is our strong point which we can beat the rest. So to close, the only thing about you have to do, you have to be as industry the good gardener of your vineyard, and not of the vineyard of the Lord. 
you have to stay curious like a kid and ignore certain things and continue asking why. And I close with a picture of Mars Express on the way uh, Mars to uh, 2003 was that. And Mars Express moves slightly away. You, on the one side you see Earth, on the one side you see the Moon. And this is a view normally we are not familiar. And sometimes only turning 90 degrees is enough. And this is the space you need. You get your business off the ground. Thank you very much. Thank you.